I traveled all the way to Japan to find out how to make the best matcha lattes. And after visiting many matcha stores, trying dozens of different matcha products, and even touring a matcha factory, I've discovered what it takes to make an S-tier matcha latte at home. In this part two of my matcha mini series, I'm gonna show you step by step how to recreate the best matcha lattes found in Japan. There are essentially three important things to get right in making a perfect matcha latte. One, choosing the right matcha. Matcha comes in different grades and using a low quality matcha may be the reason why your latte tastes bitter. Two, matcha preparation. Preparing your matcha poorly may result in a drink that's clumpy instead of smooth and creamy. And three, matcha to milk ratio. If you barely taste the matcha in your latte, it's likely because you're using the wrong amounts of matcha or milk. If you get these steps right, I guarantee you'll never order a Starbucks matcha latte again. Choosing the right matcha powder is the first and most important thing to get right for your matcha latte. Because if you use a low quality matcha, like culinary grade matcha, your latte is destined to be dumpster tier at best. If you're wondering what matcha to use, I cover how to find the best matcha for yourself extensively in my part one. So check that out if you need to. So using a high quality, medium to rich flavor matcha will set you on a path to an S tier matcha latte. And I always recommend Ipoto tea to matcha noobs and veterans alike. Depending on your preferences, I recommend their Ikuyu matcha for its incredibly well-balanced matcha flavor or their Umon matcha if you enjoy a bit more umami and sweetness. So if you choose your matcha well, that will set you up for a matcha latte with maximum potential. Great, the first step is done. Pat yourself on the back because with a high quality matcha, you've probably already got yourself at least a B tier matcha latte. Ooh, nice. Matcha preparation is the next reason why your matcha lattes are no better than Starbucks. And this is where most people and even cafes fall off the horse. So here's how you do it step by step. It's actually really easy. Start by taking three grams of matcha powder and push it through a small sieve into your matcha bowl. This helps prevent your matcha latte from having small clumps. Next, heat up 60 milliliters or grams of water to 175 degrees Fahrenheit, and when that's ready, pour it into the bowl. Matcha is optimally brewed at this temperature. Now, get a bamboo whisk to mix the matcha. You'll get the best texture and minimal clumps by using a whisk and not an electric frother. Whisk vigorously for about 15 seconds in an M shape. For the best foam, keep your whisk slightly above the bottom and whisk until you get a nice frothy layer or until there are no undissolved clumps at the bottom. At this point, you can add in your choice of sweetener if you'd like. I personally like to use brown sugar syrup. Finally, stir in 40 grams of ice cubes until dissolved to get your matcha tea to a total of 100 milliliters or grams. And now you should have a perfectly prepared cold matcha tea for your matcha latte. So you're probably in a rush to add your ice and milk, but wait, 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 how much milk are you adding? This often overlooked step is the final key to getting your matcha latte to transcend to an S tier. And it's what I call nailing your ratios. Hi, uh, can I get an iced matcha latte, please? If you've ever ordered a matcha latte that ended up tasting like overpriced milk with a hint of matcha, it's because they didn't nail their ratios. How much matcha powder you use determines how much milk you should use. So here's a breakdown for how much matcha, water, and milk you should use to achieve an S-tier matcha latte. Start by adding 50 grams of ice. For a regular 200 milliliter matcha latte, you should use 100 milliliters of milk and 100 milliliters of cold matcha tea prepared with three grams of matcha powder, just like we made it before. But if you're making a larger 300 milliliter matcha latte, you should use 200 milliliters of milk and 100 milliliters of matcha tea made with four grams of matcha powder. And that's it, it's that simple. With the right ratios, you'll get the best tasting matcha latte that's perfectly balanced in matcha flavor and milk. And I guarantee that your homemade matcha latte will taste just as good as the ones found in Japanese tea shops. Obviously, if you're making a drink smaller than 200 milliliters or you're going for a Starbucks venti size, you should adjust how much matcha and milk you use. Of course, high quality matcha can be pretty expensive, so if you're on a budget, you don't have to use as much matcha. But again, the goal today is to inform you on how to make an S-tier matcha latte that rivals Japanese cafes. And the reason why their matcha lattes are so good is quite simple. It is because the cafes use high quality matcha, which is then prepared correctly with a bamboo whisk and all, and then they use the right amounts so that the full flavor of the matcha shines through the milk basically everything we covered today. So that wraps up the part two of our matcha mini series. And I hope you've learned a few things about matcha and that you never have to pay for powdery, diluted, or overly sweetened matcha lattes again. So if you enjoyed this series, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you had any more questions about making matcha lattes, feel free to ask them in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.